Welcome to the Moment of Truth, a program that teaches the truth of God's grace based on God's Word with Rev. Merrill Wallace. This program is sponsored by OCMTracking.com, your vehicle tracking of choice. OCM Tracking Unit is more than just a tracking system, combining the very best in fleet management, cost saving, and vehicle tracking in one simple to use web application. So check us out at OCMTracking.com. All right, praise the Lord. Um, the former programs that we spoke about, how God made everything good. It means God made man in proper health, everything to be very good. And that includes you, so you must know that God made you very good also. Right. We spoke once also about how good things became bad. So we don't want good things to become bad for, for us. And bad things we, we saw last time was sickness, disease, infirmities, and all that was falling in the category of bad things. So, today we're going to talk about how Jesus really started to make things good. Right. Jesus started to teach, and I want to emphasize teach, his disciples to bring health to everybody that was sick. So it means it's not God's plan for anybody to be sick. It's God's plan for everybody to be well. He don't want people to be sick at all, right? So when he called his disciples, when Jesus started his ministry, every one of us, I guess, know about Jesus and how he started his ministry. He started his ministry with 12 disciples. And he told his disciples, hey, come follow me, and I will make you, make you fishers of men. It means Jesus had to train them to be able to make them something else because they were fishermen, they were all kind of men, but the fact is he wanted to make them fishers of men. So Jesus, it is always his plan to make us fishers, fishers of men. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 24, 23 and 24, the Bible says Jesus went all about Galilee and he started teaching his disciples how to bring the gospel to people. But good news to somebody is not being sick. But bad news to people is to be sick. You know when you are sick, it is bad news. It is not good news at all. When Jesus came and he brought that good news to people and he decided, hey, fellas, go and heal the sick. But you see, why we're not healing the sick today is because people are not taught how to heal the sick. And Jesus wanted to teach people how to heal the sick. So we see the example of him teaching his disciples how to heal the sick. And today, I don't think there are many people teaching people how to get the sick healed. You see, we have to learn how to get the sick healed and we have to practice healing the sick. So then when we see results, we know what was wrong and what is right and what we're supposed to be doing about healing the sick. Right. Um, Jesus taught his disciples he, how he taught them. For that matter, instead of saying taught, I should say train. He trained his disciples how to heal the sick. Number one, he used three parts in that training. He did it first for them to see. He told them how to do it, and then he sent them out to do it. And then he criticized what they did wrong, and then corrected them to do right. Okay, so in the same way with the church, the church today is supposed to be able to see people healing the sick. They're supposed to go somewhere if they... If they don't want to sit down and read the Bible, because I think, I believe, you can learn to heal the sick by reading your Bible. You can see Jesus, how Jesus operated, how Jesus operated with, on, the, on the sick. <clears throat> and it's the same thing the church is supposed to do. Um, 
so Jesus went about and his disciples were with him. So if we ought to heal the sick, we ought to be with Jesus. So Jesus in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 24, he said, Jesus went all about preaching the gospel and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. And I believe all kinds is all kinds. Today, the, our doctors say, well, this kind of sickness is incurable. And this kind of sickness, we have no me medical solution for it. But Jesus had a solution for every kind of sickness and every kind of disease. He had a solution for headaches. He had a solution for fever. He had a so solution for cancer. He had a solution for every kind of sickness and every kind of disease. And if Jesus is still alive today, I believe he should have a solution for every kind of sickness and every kind of disease. Not some, as the doctors tell us, well, that type of sickness is incurable and there is no medical cure for that. But I believe with Jesus, there's a medical cure for every kind of sickness and every kind of disease today. Jesus, as I said before, he started by teaching his disciples. So he went and they look at him, they look at, they listen to what he said, and then he, he decide it's time for them to start to go out. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1, the Bible said, he called his disciples and he gave them power and authority to cure sickness and disease. But today we don't see many of his disciples doing that curing sickness and disease. I believe that we supposed to be curing sickness and curing disease today. You see? So, I was telling a little story about a lady I met and she told me about some clots she had. I tell her, well, Jesus can cure you. Jesus can heal you. She said, well, Maris, what do you mean by that? I tell her, let me just pray for you. And I believe Jesus will cure you. And that was on Friday. That was on Friday of last week. And she met my wife about two days ago. And she told my wife from that time she received prayer, she was healed and made whole from that very moment, no more clots. So from clots to cancer, Jesus can heal every kind of sickness and every kind of disease. So he trained his disciples first thing, and I, I might be emphasizing the words train a little often, but the fact is we need to be trained to heal the sick. And so Jesus, in training the disciples to heal the sick, he told them, fellas, go heal the sick, cast out demons, freely you receive, freely go and give. So it means we supposed to understand that we can receive the power of God freely and we're supposed to give it freely to everyone that need to get healed sickness and disease. Remember, we said last time, sickness came because of sin. So sickness is something bad. But Jesus came to heal the sick. Jesus came to do something good to everybody that is sick. Jesus came to heal them. Right. So number one, what Jesus did. He decided, he trained his disciples. He went about with, the, with his disciples. He preached 
And the fact is, we have to learn that we have to learn before we can teach. It means, yes, I want to teach. I want to preach what I have to learn. It means I am still learning. And maybe as long as I live, I still feel that I'll be learning because I need to learn something new every day. The Bible is the only book that can talk. You can read a book and the book will talk to you because you will read something from the book. But the Bible is the only book that I know that can talk to us and teach us something. So it means, yes, Jesus is not there today. Maybe you don't live by somebody that can heal the sick today. So you can be taught by a friend, a, a person, a man. But we can be taught by the word of God. Just sit down with Jesus. Spend some time with Jesus. Sit down, take your time. And he will teach you and he will give you freely the power of God to heal the sick. Good. Um, in Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 6, Jesus tell them to go heal the sick. I want you to observe something there. He didn't tell them to go and pray for the sick. Yes, there are scriptures in the Bible that says, if anybody is sick among you, let them call for the elder, elders of the church and let them pray for the sick. But Jesus didn't tell his disciples to go and pray for the sick. He told his disciples to go and heal the sick. Go and cast out demons. Freely you receive from me and freely you go and give to everybody that is sick. Right, I want to, to tell you some things today. I want to let something sink inside of you. Um, number one, Jesus trained his disciples, so we have to get trained. Number two, Jesus correct his disciples, so we are to get corrected. Number three, Jesus sent his disciples, so we ought to go and heal the sick. And we ought to go and cast out demons and do the same things that Jesus did. Jesus said that the works that I do shall ye do also. And greater works than these shall you do. I mean, the fact is, it doesn't even make sense to talk about greater works. Let's talk about the works that Jesus did. If Jesus said that we're supposed to do the same things that he did, then we're supposed to be able to go and do the same things that Jesus did today. Right. So, as his disciples we're supposed to go and demonstrate so that the world could see. One thing we have a lot today of is a lot of preaching. We may have a lot of preaching, a lot of teaching, but we do not have a lot of demonstration of the word of God where people preach, teach, and do. So today I want to preach, I want to teach, and I want to do. You understand, your job is to preach, teach, and do. Today, I'm going to stop here on this one, this program. And on the next program, I believe we'll be praying for the sick. But from the, from the next program, we will tell you some things about what Jesus did, how Jesus corrected his disciples when they were going wrong and healing the sick. God bless you.